that, uh, last but not least, we've got our next speaker, Greg Boone. Greg is the co-CEO of Blue Acorn ICI and NC's Tech 2018 Tech Executive of the Year. So another great and accomplished speaker. I had a recent conversation with Greg. It was pretty funny. I asked him, uh, have you been in any roles where you had to cover, carry a number? He goes, I'm the CEO. I have to carry the biggest number. So we all had a chuckle out of that. Um, and uh, he's right. When you're the CEO, you carry the biggest number, so you know pressure and what it is like to hit goals and achieve uh, revenue at your company. So he knows about pressures of meeting goals. He certainly knows about uh, how to build organizations as well. And there's a quote, Greg, uh, uh, I read about that Greg uh, quoted, and it goes like this. You don't build a business, you build people. Then people build the business. And I think that's so true. So um, really good segue to what Greg is going to talk about, which is how to build leaders. I'm really excited to hear him speak about that. And again, talk about a topic that hasn't been addressed that much today. So another interesting amount of uh, content and feedback for you all today. So with that, please help me in welcoming Greg Boone to the T-Rex stage. Appreciate that. Can everybody hear me? All right. Got my notes here, so I apologize. I'll be coming back and forth to make sure I don't miss out on anything. How many of you in this room are actually from Durham? Okay. What's that? In four weeks, you'll be from Durham. Uh, so I am Greg Boone. I am born and raised here in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, 41 years. Actually, my uh, high school graduation, all the Durham public schools go next door, or back then they did, to the Marriott here for our uh, little graduation party. So this uh, brings back, bring back some memories. Uh, not all of them great. Actually, on graduation day, I somehow managed to hit myself in the face with a baseball bat. Yeah. You should never hit a basketball with a baseball bat. So I went to my party with shades on. It's a true story, head stitches. Um, so I have some different memories about this location and this area. Um, but what I wanted to talk about today was, <clears throat> true, I do believe in growing people is the most important component to growing a business. But I also wanted to talk about my own journey, my own growth. Uh, hopefully, it's at a minimum helpful to you all. Um, but really quick, um, I think uh, earlier today, how many of you have, you know, putting your hands up, saw Donald Thompson present earlier? Okay. I heard Donald mention me. Was it positive or negative? Michael, was it positive or negative? Oh, okay. I've known a few of you for a while now. Um, but I started my career with uh, a company called iCube that Donald ran um, back in July of 2010. And over a period of four years, I went from a uh, sales engineer that lasted about 30 days. Apparently, I wasn't good at my job. So I was transitioned to senior software engineer, solution architect. Uh, team lead, software engineering manager, director of emerging technologies, senior vice president, general manager, president, CEO. The reason why I wanted to talk about that, because what I wanted to give you all today is just some of the lessons that I learned and the things that helped me actually grow over that four-year period. I had eight, nine different business cards. I went from being a part of the team to running the team to running a company. And as Vince mentioned earlier, as the CEO, you are the head of sales. I own every number that's in the company. Right, wrong, or indifferent. What I'd like to also do as a part of this conversation is make it as interactive as possible. So feel free to stop me, ask questions. I'm pretty much open book. Um, if you want to do over or under, the number of slides I have, I am for sure under. I have five or six slides, hope not to bore you too long, but I'm really going to try to get in and hopefully you guys can come up or if you can ask questions uh, throughout. Raise your hand or come up, for it. come up front. I believe in these three key steps that got me to where I am right now. 
for sure I had to do the things like work hard, uh, be persistent, get lucky. Right? I did all of those things. But the other three key steps that I wanted to talk to you all about, which could be good both for your own internal growth as well as when you're out there prospecting and working with uh, current clients and potential clients. These are not going to be groundbreaking. The first one is build relationships. I will dig a little bit in deeper as to what I did for my own growth. And hopefully you guys can come to me with some questions and think of some different ways that maybe this can help you. Second way is to be coachable, truly coachable. I'll spend a little bit more time on the being coachable piece. And the last one is taking risks. How many CEOs are in the room? I got to imagine all of you took some significant risk in, at some point in your career. You have to be willing to take risk if you want to grow. There's no way around it. Build relationships. Three components of building relationships that have helped me out. Hopefully they'll help you. Go outside. Not outside in the literal sense, but go outside of the folks that you talk to on a daily basis in your organizations. I think most of the organizations in this room are small enough that you should be able to meet the person that runs HR, the person that runs finance, legal, engineering. When I struggled early in my uh, career at iCubed, when I um, lasted only 30 days on the sales side, quickly got shipped to the engineering side, I realized that there was something I was going to need to change. Right. There were clearly things that I didn't know, I didn't understand, and I really needed to start to, bet, to better learn the rest of the business. It's no different when you're prospecting out there. Right. There's the direct buyer, but then there are all the folks that are influencing, the champions, and you've got to know everybody in the organization if you want to close that deal. Think about your own growth as prospecting the, uh, the biggest client of them all. Show humility. Um, the reason why I wasn't very good at my job when I first started is uh, I thought I had all the answers. Right. I actually offer less answers now as a CEO than I did back then as a sales engineer. Right. What I didn't realize is that as I was doing this, I was inadvertently bashing the ideas that came before me. Right. There is a time and place for everything, my mother tells me. And uh, I had to start to learn when that time was. I had to learn how to be a better teammate. I started with showing humility. Helping others. I know a lot of these things seem fluffy. I figured out how I could help any and everyone in the organization because I knew at some moment I was going to need something from them. I do the same thing when I talk to my clients. I called one of my clients, my biggest clients, Monday morning. I said, hey, hope everything's going well. Now you have this big launch today. Just want to make sure you know that I'm here for you. Now. When the CEO calls your biggest client talking about a launch, that also put a level of fear into him. Like, why is this dude calling me right now? Should I be concerned? Maybe. It didn't launch. <laughs> I didn't know that, right? But I had already set the stage for the next conversation. Right? I was trying to be helpful so that the next conversation, when in fact it actually did not launch, end of day Tuesday, it still has not launched, Right? That it's going to make that next conversation an easier one to have. Right? Building relationships is key, both for your own internal growth as well as the things that you're doing as you're starting to, to meet with more clients, both current and pr prospective. The second one, be coachable. Many of you don't know my background. Um, again, I grew up here in Durham, Durham Public Schools. 
played high school basketball and baseball, played a little college basketball and baseball. I was way more coachable then than I was in my business career. You guys met Donald earlier. He was my uh, coach at IQ 2010. He still reminds me, uh, the first time he met me, he said, hey, hey, Greg, tell me a little bit about yourself. And I realized Donald being a very uh, uh, alpha person that I needed to uh, speak with a little bit more confidence. And I said probably the dumbest thing I've ever said to him. I said, I demand respect. I don't even know where that came from. There's no context to that. Right? He literally asked me, tell me something about yourself. And I said, I demand respect. He said, well, OK, why would you say that to me? I had no follow up. That was the first day that I started. And uh, somehow I managed to dig myself out of that. A lot of that was continuing to build those relationships and to be coachable. I learned that I had to start to listen more, listen really hard, listen not just to uh, what was being said, but what wasn't being said. Right. That's one of the challenging things for a lot of uh, talented sales folks. When I work with a lot of junior sales folks, they'll get into a conversation with the client, and they're trying to qualify the deal. They're trying to get the budget, authority, need, timing, all of those pieces that you need to qualify the deal. But what they didn't realize is that the client already said these things when they opened the conversation. They were so ready to just say their script. They just had to say it. I'm just waiting. And I've been on the calls, and I've watched some of the junior folks do this. And they're sitting there, and they're just waiting. It's like, as soon as he stops talking, I'm going to just go at it. And as soon as they do it, I hit mute. Nope. Like, they just told you all those things. It comes to my other big point around listening. If you're going to listen, take notes. Taking notes is very helpful. One of the things it does is it keeps you from actually talking. One of my biggest pet peeves is when folks come to me in an interview and I'll have the most senior person and they're dressed up and way nicer than this. I, I apologize. I, I didn't know how to dress for this audience. And I walked in, I saw a lot of suits. Michael, I saw you in your suit. You look clean. We've had many breakfasts together. I've never seen you in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, they show up, and they got the suit on, their binders, and they sit there, and we talk for 15, 20 minutes. And then if you've ever actually interviewed with me, I don't think anyone in here has, I'll stop the interview, and I say, you plan on writing any of this down? It's important to me. It's important to me to know that you're coachable. It's important to a lot of executives to know that you're coachable. It's important to a lot of clients to know that you're coachable, that you listen. I skipped out on kind of what I actually do, but I'm co-CEO of Blue Acorn ICI. We're a data-driven strategic consultancy. I spend a lot of my time actually working with a lot of expiring and leading brands, working with them on their digital marketing, their technology, their strategy, their sales execution. We help a lot of brands actually grow to be the next uh, Pindo. How many people here are from Pindo? Nice. So Todd was uh, one of the finalists with me uh, for a tech executive of the year. And I said, I don't care if I win, I told my team. I said, but I'm not losing to Todd. Because Todd wins everything. But uh, the point being, really listen. Understand the things that are necessary for you to grow in your careers, the things that are necessary to close that client, the things they're really asking for not just the thing you want to sell them. Practice often. Yes, I'm talking about practice. So any folks that know Allen Iverson quote, I'm talking about practice. Practice? Yeah. It's funny, uh, I started um, my college career in 1995 at Howard University. I played basketball there. and. Uh, so we were right down the street from Georgetown, and Alan Iverson was a sophomore. And uh, he would always come over to our campus and wow all of our young ladies on campus. And 
even the young men, everybody wanted to meet Alan Iverson. It's like, I play ball too. <laughs> you know, I learned then to be very humble. Um, but no, practice often, right? To be coachable is one thing. To be able to actually apply it and execute is another. I've got a lot of time that I've spent with uh, Donald Thompson, but I would never try to present and be the same person that he is. Right? For me, it's about practicing early, often. I practice on the way over here. There's a lot of stuff that I'm going to miss out on that I'm not going to say here. I practice, I was like, nah, that sounds stupid. You shouldn't say that. Right? Then there are certain things I'm still going to say that sound stupid. OK. Right? But what I want to be is authentic. I want to make it my own. You guys have to own it. Everything that you learn, hopefully you learn something from here today. Right? Hopefully you learn something when you go back to work. I'm a firm believer that I learned in every interaction that I have. The presentation I was actually going to do today was way different until I talked to uh, Vince uh, a few days ago. And he said, you know what? Folks may actually like to hear more of your story, how you grew from being employee number 55. I also missed that point. I actually didn't found the company. I keep calling out Michael because he's one of the shareholders of the original company. I was employee number 55. I was almost fired the first 30 days of my career there. I went on to hopefully make some folks a good bit of money. But these are some of the things that I did to be able to get to that point in my career. Questions, comments, thoughts? No, not yet? I only got one more slide, so I told you to take the under. Exactly. See, you summed it up into one slide. Right? Like, that's the point, right? People ask me all the time, they say, well, why do you always feel, seem confident in your conversations? I was like, I only talk about shit I know. <laughs> I don't have 15 slides. I don't know 15 slides worth of stuff. I know these five slides. I got five? I have six slides, and two of them are the same slide. In taking risks, you have to be able to recognize an opportunity. Most of you are in sales or marketing or in leadership. In your professional lives, you recognize an opportunity. Right? You recognize an opportunity with your clients, with your prospects. But sometimes folks actually don't recognize the opportunity they have internally with their own organizations. The next time someone asks you and they say, hey, could you mentor this junior salesperson? I know your natural reaction is, how are they going to help me hit my number? I don't know the answer to that. Maybe you can figure it out, delegate, get them to do some things that are going to help you hit your number. But what I do know is, if your response is always, I don't have time for that, I'm not really going to lean on you for the next time for the next big job. Now, I'm only talking from my own perspective, but I can tell you what other leaders say and do. It's like, hey, why don't you promote this person? Oh, I asked him, would he mentor this, per this other person, and he seemed to not have time for that. It's like, okay. Any and every one of you that are in the audience today, if you want to grab coffee with me at some point, I promise you, if you reach out to me, I will say yes. It may not be tomorrow. But I will say yes. Again, I believe I can learn from every interaction. I was on one of uh, Donald's podcasts recently, and one of the things I told him is I said, uh, I treat every day like an interview. Right? Every day that I go out there, every time I'm on, I'm on stage, every time I'm talking to a client, I don't know when that's going to come back to me in a positive way or in a negative way. So I treat it like an interview. I don't know if my next uh, boss, investor, senior leader on my team, I don't know if you're in the audience or not. So I have to treat every moment like, a, like it's an interview. 
And with that, I'm recognizing opportunity all the time. Eric called me, he said, hey, do you think you could uh, speak for a few minutes you know, at the T-Rex event? I said, yep. I didn't even ask him what it was. I had no idea what the hell a T-Rex was. <laughs> he called me and asked me what I do. I said, yep. I said, where is it? It's in Durham? Yep. I'm from Durham. Yep, let's do that. Right. I recognize opportunity. Now I offer solutions. Right. It's all about the right time. Early in my career, I just offered solutions that made no sense, uh, out of context, wrong audience. A lot of folks have critiques. Right? When you're taking risks, don't view it just as busy work. I had someone recently on my team, they said, I, you know, I really want to own a budget but I'm concerned about how much time it's gonna take. So you don't wanna own the budget. No, 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 I wanna own the budget. Okay, so can we tie it to your VC? No, 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 no. So you don't wanna own it. What do you wanna do? Oh, I don't know about that. There's a lot of folks that we talk to as we're trying to get to grow future leaders that can tell you all the things they don't wanna do. Then you say, okay. What do you want to do? Let's co-create that great job for you. I get a lot of the same response. I don't know what I want to do. I was hoping you were going to tell me. That's not my job. My job is not to tell you what you're going to do. Right? My job is to partner with you to figure out how I can get the most value out of you. The last piece, and I want to take some uh, questions. I promised I wouldn't go over and I would save some time. I put some poker chips up here. How many people play poker? Nice. How many people play in the World Series of Poker? Me either. I want to do that one day. Not everything's going to work out. When you're taking risks, you got to be friendly to failure, and you got to fail fast, and you got to move on whether that's with your client, right? My head of sales one day told me, he said, hey, we just lost this uh, million dollar um, opportunity we thought we were gonna win. My response was, cool. He said, excuse me? I said, cool. I said, what do you mean cool? I said, like, I'm confident that you're gonna go find me another million dollar deal. Right? Not everything is gonna work out. Pipeline gives you options. I'm sure you guys have heard that. Try some things out. Do something different. Whether that's with your career, whether that's with prospect, qualify the deal, qualify the opportunity internally. Learn, listen, do all of these things. Same slide. Slide number two. Again, build relationships. Be coachable. Take risks. These are the things that have helped me in my career. Hopefully they can help you guys.